my name is Linda, and I thought this week we can chat about food photography. More specifically, food props I love using when I'm shooting food. So I thought, um, I guess a little background, I love my photos to tell a story. Um, anytime I can bring in a mood or a vibe or tell you more about the setting, I love doing that. Um, I tend to stay away from up-close shots. There's a lot of food bloggers that do really well um, with up-close shots, um, but I just love to pull back a little bit and have more background, foreground, things to contribute to a story. Um, there are exceptions for me personally. I love close-up shots of, sometimes a close-up shot of pizza overhead is gorgeous. Um, close-up shots of burgers I love. Um, just kind of going a tight shot so that you can see the glistening meat <laughs> or the, the melted cheese. So there are ex exceptions, but typically I love telling a story with my photos. Um, one way you can do that with food is to bring in some props. Um, so I thought I'd highlight some props. I will link a blog post I wrote about this a few years ago. I'm updating it soon so you guys are going to get a more updated um, list from me. Uh, and then I'll just start. So first of all, I love um, using my sunglasses. This used to be something I did more often um, to the point where people started to know if the photo was me um, because of sunglasses because I always had this the heart this is my fourth pair of the same heart glasses um, I keep breaking them anyway you don't have to have a signature sunglass um, sunglasses to incorporate in your photo any sunglasses will do I sometimes will grab my friends if I don't have mine on hand and what these do it, it adds to it's something else you can contribute to your flat lay but also it kind of brings in the vibe of alfresca dining um, so it's a great prop to use it also kind of creates um, I guess points of interest in your photo so another prop I love using is napkins um, I don't love using paper napkins so if a um, business usually food trucks will have paper napkins I tend to just not include the napkin in my photo but when you're at home or at a restaurant that has cloth napkins, these are wonderful. It adds another layer of interest to your photo without taking away from the star of your photo, which is the food. Um, the, these napkins are napkins I've, I've actually sewn, um, sewn? Sewed. Sewed a long time ago when I was trying to learn how to sew. It was the only thing I've done with a machine that I borrowed from my mom. Um, but they've lasted quite a while and I use them whenever I take photos at home which is more now that we are in a pandemic. Um, but yeah, cloth napkins are great. They're great for the environment and they're great for your food photos. So another thing I love using is menus. Menus are a wonderful way to add a location context to your photo, um, especially if it's a very pretty menu. I would love to, I, I like to put maybe a cup of coffee on top of the menu and then you can see the gorgeous logo kind of peeking out from under the cup. Um, it kind of adds a layer of detail to your photo that um, doesn't take away from the main focus, which is usually the food. Um, so yeah, I, I tend to also collect paper menus if I'm planning on blogging a place. So if it's not, um, if it's a menu that you can tell that they print often or they change out the menu, I usually ask permission if I just take it home and that helps me with blogging purposes and captions. So that's another tip I have for you. Um, another thing I love using is um, paper straws. So I have a supply of paper straws for if ever I need to style a photo at home with drinks. Um, paper straws are friendlier for the environment and I yeah, I drink my coffee with straws. Um, I used to use plastic straws and I'm happy to report that it's been about a year and a half since I've converted completely to the metal straws. Mm, caffeine. Um, but yeah, these are wonderful to, just to have um, in case you are a food blogger that does recipe development. Hey, Neva. Hello. Um, this is my dog, Neva. She is often on my YouTube channel, but I don't think she's um, made it to my Patreon yet, but this is Neva. Um, so Neva, another thing we love using for food photography is um, utensils. I got these cute pink chopsticks from a museum in DC um, when I was there in December, and I haven't quite used them yet, but 
You'll often see I have a red um, pair of chopsticks that I use in some photos at home. I'll pop some examples next to me. Um, I actually got them as a wedding favor gift. Um, and a, and a, I went to a wedding and it was one of the wedding favors. And now I use it all the time for food photography. Um, the chopsticks I eat with are like the, the wood plain ones that everyone has. Um, but these are great ways to add some detail to your photos. Not just chopsticks, but I have some friends who um, are more of um, at-home food photography people. So they do recipe development. Um, and they have gold silverware that I, I just can't bring myself to buy yet. Um, but yeah, you can just grow your collection. You don't need that much to add to the photo, but if it were me, I'd just buy like one set. I don't need to be eating and using them uh, for everyday use. And um, another thing you can use is kitchen towels. I know that they're kind of similar to cloth napkins, but they're bigger and wider. And so these are great contexts for if you were baking something. Um, it's, it, it's usually prettier than pot holders. Um, and it adds to the story that something just came fresh from the oven. But the other thing you can do with these that I've done in the past is actually spread them out and make them a background. So they look like if you put a plate of food on there, it looks like a tablecloth. Um, so that's another thing you can keep in your box of goodies. Um, finally, let's see, what else do I have? Oh, you can buy, um, I, I don't have them on me right now because I didn't feel like bringing out a big two, but you can buy um, roll-out backgrounds. I have two. Um, I don't use them that often because I feel like my table here does the trick and I can use tablecloths, um, but you can buy backgrounds. I have one that looks like wood, white wood, and I have another one that looks like marble. The marble one I've kind of outgrown because you can kind of, if you take a really high definition photo, you can see the grooves of the vinyl um, and know that it's not real marble. Um, I do have a skinny slab of real marble that I use. It's pretty heavy um, for some photos and backgrounds, but I know some bloggers who will actually buy a full-on marble cutting cutting board to use, um, and they make great, great um, food photography props. Um, and then finally, cutting boards. Cutting boards are great. Um, I have one that I haven't used yet in photos that I am, am excited to use. It's a North Carolina shaped, but it's a great way to style cheese boards, um, chips. It's just um, another another pretty background, textured background, background that you can use for your photos. And then lastly, I actually have another two more things. Um, flowers and plants, or you know, flower plants, especially flowers, they add a, a pop of um, life in your photos. And I just think flowers are gorgeous. And so anytime there is, if I'm walking into a restaurant and I see that they stagger out tabletop vases with um, flowers and my table doesn't have um, a vase with flowers, I will borrow one from another table just to take the photo and I'll, I'll pop it back in. Um, it just adds a layer of, it adds a kind of a romantic feel to your photos. Then this last tip is not really a prop because it's a body part. But um, anytime you can include a human element, more specifically your hands, I think it does really great for photos. Um, it reduces the um, emotional distance between the person viewing the photo and the photo. So anytime you can include a, a human element in your photo, it kind of makes it easier for a viewer to emotionally connect with your photo. So anytime I can include a hand or hands in my photo, I will. And that's it from me this week. So if you have any other um, tips for me in terms of food, food photography and props specifically, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And I will see you next week. Bye.